Welcome to the Published Plot. I'm Nate. I'm Jessica. And I'm Mike. Today, we are here with another installment of our series on Hispanic Heritage Month. We be in. Yes. And today we picked a saint, not at all because we think that, you know, the people in charge of media for Pope Francis are going to be like, hey, that's what he likes. <laughs> Wait. I thought we picked him because he was a cowboy. Also, he was a cowboy. Or a gaucho, as they're called, in both of him and the Pope's native Argentina. <laughs> There's nothing that says we can't have more than one perfectly good reason to pick a saint. Today we're talking about Saint Jose Gabriel del Rosario Bochero. The, the cowboy, cowboy priest. priest. Gaucho. Uh, he was born March 16th, 1840 in... Santa Rosa del Rio Primero, Argentina. So... Yet another thing that is named after St. Rose, Sorry. most likely. Argentina. Argentina. <laughs> All right. I, I can't even say the words with a with no accent. You know, you, your, your level is at accenting it. <laughs> and then he died on January 26th, 1914 at age 73. Yes. Yep. In Via del, Tra del Trasito, Cordoba, Argentina. Mm -hmm. uh, he was beatified in 2013 in Argentina. Um... The Pope had wanted to do it, but it's one of those things where his just travel plans didn't work out, so he had a cardinal do it. Well, he is busy being Pope. Yes, but he was canonized October 16th, 2016 in Vatican City by the Pope. I'm sure that made Papa Francesco very happy. It, it's like when your team wins the, you know, the sports and, and it's a local one. It doesn't matter yeah. that you have nothing besides geography in common, you know? Well, I, <laughs> you know, again, I, I went to the beatification of Blessed Solana Casey. This is a man who died, you know... Over a decade before anyone from my family moved to Michigan. But, but he's local. Exactly. <laughs> he's a hometown hero. There you go. Um, he was the fourth of ten children. Uh, apparently he had two sisters. <coughs> Bless you. Thank you. And the rest were brothers. Uh, he started studying to be a priest at age 16. And he became a priest at age 26. Now... It appears it wasn't that, you know, he stopped for a while or do anything different. And he did not become a Jesuit because in part of the story of his life, he has great respect for the Jesuits, but he's not a Jesuit. So it's not like when you mentioned that it takes 10 years for someone to become a Jesuit. But he just, he had a thorough um, discernment. Yes, yes. And starting at age 16, it was probably, you know, like the pre pre class. A large portion <laughs> of it was probably uh, effectively high school. Yeah, uh -huh. that's what minor seminary is. Mm -hmm. uh, he taught philosophy at a seminary for for a few years and was awarded the title of Master of Philosophy Ooh. on the 12th of November, 1869. After that, he was assigned to the Diocese of St. Albert, which, if you are anywhere in the area, I'm sure you've heard of, because this is just a little a tiny diocese of 1,675 square miles in rural area of the Great Highlands region. And this is where he found his destiny as the gaucho priest. Yes, yeah. because he had to travel very long distances in small towns to town area. Mm -hmm. So he went by mule because that is the most practical animal to take for that geography. It was, it was the classic circuit priest. Mm -hmm. Except for the fact that he was wearing a sombrero and a poncho, which I suppose is a classic for that area. Exactly. <laughs> I like it. But, he, but not just the sombrero and the poncho. Yes, he also smoked the, there was a, a set name, but essentially it was like the local cigarette equivalent. Yeah. This guy was cool. Mm -hmm. uh, along with being super cool looking, he always brought an image of Mary to the people. He really is cool. His mask kit in a prayer book. So that way he would what be... A mensch. He would be set to do any, you know, sacraments mm -hmm. or other things that he needed to do for any of the people so, that he met. It sounds pretty standard issue. Mm -hmm. Have mask kit, will travel. Um, because it was all so many rural areas, mm -hmm. he wanted to go and do like retreat type things with different people. Sure. Just because people live in the boondocks doesn't mean they don't need spiritual formation. Yes. And at least once he, he essentially had like a caravan of people walking to the local, you know, biggest area that the church had that they could do stuff. Yeah. And, and after doing that, he decided that he was going to make his own House of Exercises, as in, you know, the spiritual exercises of St. Ignatius. Not a Jesuit, but a Jesuit appreciator. Yes. And he did that in 1875. And then by 1880, 
it appeared to be on like the same area of land, he made a school for girls as well. So that, you know. So we already see a clear pattern developing of wherever he sees a need, he then fills it. Mm -hmm. He doesn't just say, hey, someone should do something. He says, hey, I'm someone. I should do something. Which is why some of his bios call him a civil servant and an engineer, even though officially he was not either one. Yeah. Because he made so that there was post offices, there was telegraph posts, there was aqueducts, there was roads and rail lines throughout his diocese. Mm -hmm. And sometimes it was, he literally was using the tools to build a road in his diocese. (laughs) Hey, you know, if you gotta keep traveling the same path, and sometimes it, a little bit of an investment might make that ride a little easier. No one is gonna get better use out of these roads than me. Yes, yes, and it's something where the local people gave what they could because yeah. they also saw the value both in having this infrastructure and and having Father Jose be able to come to them. <laughs> um, There's nothing inherently wrong with self-interest. Yes, well, he. He was known for devoting his life to the sick and needy. Uh, He has a quote that I didn't put in here about essentially the poor devil who tries to stop me from doing my things. (laughs) (laughs) I'm a man of nonviolence, but the guy who tries to stop me from doing this. During a cholera break in 1867, he cared for the sick. Uh, He also apparently got leprosy. There's, There's some dispute as to how it happened. Well, some are the vague, the fact that he constantly was working with lepers and helping them. And some are a very exact story to the point where it's like, I'm pretty sure either that was made up after the point, which given how he lived within the same lifetime of people that we, you know, know almost, Mm -hmm. probably it's one of those things where I'm like, I kind of see that being so exacting details to be true. (laughs) It's too specific. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, apparently the story suggests that he got leprosy by uh, drinking yerba mate with some patients. Mm. You know, passing around a cup kind of a thing. Yep, yep, yep. Uh, He was appointed to be the canon of the Cathedral of Cordoba on April 24th, 1898. The end of of his wandering years? Yeah. Well, he only stayed there for, I think it was less than a year, and he was given other kind of more high-profile jobs after all his many years of, you know, being out in the field. Yeah. <laughs> but towards the end of his life, his wandering did come to an end. Oh. Uh, he, he became both blind and deaf. Yikes. And uh, spent his last years with his sisters, who also happened to be nuns. Well, that's convenient. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And he has excellent last words for a saint i mean it's not the kind of you know fun last words that you expect of a world leader where you're like yeah that's witty but for, no, for these holiness, are saints these, these are, are <laughs> saints last words yep mike would you like to do the honors now i have everything ready for the journey see that that, that is the kind of last words that a saint goes and has mm-hmm. no no attachment to this world uh no it, it's completely peaceful it's I mean, that's the type of thing that makes sure that you get declared a saint and not get declared not officially a saint because you may or may not have been buried alive and tried clawing out. <laughs> oh, poor Thomas Akempis. <laughs> or your last word is like, and that son of a gun owes me five bucks. <laughs> I will hunt you all from my grave. <laughs> no, no, no. There was at least a friend of a saint who, 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 who went and, you know, came back to the saint and said, yeah, God said I could come back to see you, but he is not happy about this agreement. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, uh, also, two years after he died, they renamed the city that he died in, in honor of him. Boom. Nice. Via Cura Brochero. Hmm. Well, that makes sense. Yeah. Um. The cowboy priest? Cur- curate. Yeah, the curate. Yeah. Uh, Jean, Jean-Marie Vianney is the curate of ours. Yeah. Yeah. Saint Jose Gabriel de Rosario Bochero, the cowboy priest. Pray for us. Now, we've come to the time of the, st- uh, of the show where we, we encourage you to go down below and leave us a comment. Preferably a uh, saint of Hispanic origin that we haven't done yet. Or maybe one we have done that really j- their story just spoke to you and you you know want to share that. 
Or because he's known for, you know, riding a mule with sombrero and a poncho while smoking. So cool. What would your symbols be if you were made a saint? <laughs> Because there's tons of pictures of him like this. This is like so cool. <laughs> I, I want I want my holy image to be. Yes, we discussed the the the, <laughs> the buddy the finger guns. buddy Christ. <laughs> no, because that's yeah. He's just <laughs> a finger guns. <laughs> that's fair. <laughs> Nate's his mid sip. <laughs> I caught my surprise. <laughs> <laughs> Give this episode a like. Subscribe to our channel. Ring the church bell to be notified the next time a plot is uploaded. Reminder, if you're going to give us a thumbs down, you also owe us an explanation of what we didn't do that we ought to have done or what we could do better next time. Yep. Because we like our criticisms constructive. Mm. And until next time, remember to live your faith. Love your faith. Share, Share that, that love. love.